So welcome to the Stromzy community call on 14 July, 2022. Uh, the first point on the agenda is questions and issues, open forum, seeing only the known faces. I guess we probably don't have any questions which are not on the agenda. Okay, so the next part are the open PRs and issues. I edit some of them which seem to be stuck for some time. I wanted to talk about this one, but actually this is not the right time for, for Shubham to join us. Uh, should we leave it for next time? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've spoken to him about this, um, the final, I think there are two points. One was why he was checking the conditions, uh, which I think you raised, Jakob. Um, and the other one was this re-raising of the parent exception, which I originally wrote, and I can't tell you why it does that. So he's going to he's going to remove it. Um, so hopefully, because uh, he was talking to him about so, it this morning. Yeah, one thing which I was wondering around with the exception is whether maybe we are using the parent exception to not need the exceptions and the deep from some dependencies. Like yeah. ideally you don't want to have Netty as a direct dependency in Strimsy, for example. But uh, but the yeah, so I, I thought I all uh, but Shabam also thought that. But I said, well, why wouldn't you? You could just catch the parent exception, then I suppose. Yeah, exactly. That that would be like you don't need to create the new exception there. You can just catch the yeah. main exception in general. But so, so really, my main point for the comments is if there is some sense in that, I'm I'm not really saying that we have to absolutely remove it. I just think we should have some comments there explaining some justification why yeah. it does what it does. Well, I couldn't find one, neither could Shabam. And I did some tests where I just removed it all and nothing broke. So um, I think we're probably going to go with that. So he's working on that. So yeah, hopefully at this the, this meeting next month, we should, we should have a solution. Okay, the next one is proxy container configuration. Nobody from the QE is here. Okay, so I guess it looks like it has approvals. Uh, it was the sonotype command. I don't even know what it means. So I guess I will ping Marosh and see if this can be merged. Yeah, Federico is quite keen to get this one merged in. So. We approved it last. I approved it last. Do we need Tom's review for this? Let's merge it, I guess. Should have probably checked that PR before I edit it to the agenda, right? <laughs> it's kind of exciting watching merging in live, you know, real time. <laughs> yeah. This is how the sausage is made. <laughs> Paolo, I saw you commented on it earlier. Yeah, uh, I had another pass. So actually, in the past uh, in, in the past few days, I asked even Pavel um, is working on open telemetry, so he knows much better uh, how it works in, in Goland, a review. Uh, he had the pass and 
gave some suggestions and they were applied by the user. Uh, I also added a couple of comments today. So it seems that from a code point of view, it's fine with me. Uh, there are some changes that I guess are related to high, uh, how the ID from the user is set. So it's kind of applying things that we don't need in this PR, to be honest. And uh, also, I also raised the problem that yeah, the DCO is red and it has to be fixed and uh, tests are failing. So I asked him to if he tried the tests locally to run. Uh, so now I'm waiting for him and uh, at some point, yeah, I think, I think that we can approve and merge finally. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't really like much how the PR went here because like it's a contributor trying to contribute something, but there's quite a long time where pretty much all the comments there are from Sam and Keith, who it's great that they help to review it. But that takes quite a long time. That takes basically two weeks. Then the guy fixed this. Then there are another bunch of comments from you and Keith, I guess. Then he fixes it again. And then there's, then we get Pavel to review it again and have another chunk of comments. If I, was the con I think all of the reviews are are fine on their own, and I think it's great that we have users helping to review the PRs or someone like Pavel review it. But if I was the contributor, I would probably just tell us to go the fuck off somewhere because it's taking a lot of time. He's doing a lot of work just to get more and more comments. I think. Would be much nicer even in cases like this we can get the comments from the parties we are interested in much faster to give the contributors a bit better experience yeah i agree but you know i know that sam and kit are using the canary so they jumped into it and maybe they were busy and and the same for us so yeah, it is what it is, but let's hope that it, so it, so my, my, my comments were the last one. So I guess that we don't need uh, any other review from uh, Keith, Sam, Pavel, just uh, see how the user will fix these things that are not actually working, that are in red, and then I will approve because it's okay from my side. And yeah, I mean, clearly we cannot merge it right now with the test failing and the no, DCO yes. wrong. So that needs to be fixed, right? But yes, yeah, I don't know. I think like we are always complaining that we don't have too many outside contributors, but this can very easily be a place where we lost one, right? Well, even if I think that all the comments were smart comments, so changes to be applied, they were uh, important, not something like that. And uh, for example, in general, my I I could say, okay, it's fine with me, but in general, I don't like when, even on, on my side, if I am using an ID with the different settings from the others, and then I am screwing up all the other files uh, just because my ID has different settings. So I, I don't like, even when I open a PR, I think that I don't have to change files that are not related to the PR just because my ID has a different settings, right? So this yeah, was I, my last comment today. I don't think the comments were wrong in, it's not like I understand the canary that much, but it's not that I'm criticizing the content of the comments or who commented there. For me, the issue is the timing of the comments because it kind of, the way it works, he gets a bunch of comments from someone then a few days, nothing, he fix it. Then a few days, nothing. Then he gets a bunch of other comments uh, and so on. And in the meantime, there are other PRs merged into it and so on. So, I mean, if he had gotten all the comments which he got, but if he managed to do this within a 
two, three days, for example. I think that would be completely fine. And then he can incorporate the comments and there can be another round of the reviews. But like, if you look at the flow, it's 24 May, it was opened. Then uh, we had the discussion about the proper implementation. Okay, that went fine. Then we had some comments from, from Sam, which were, which were incorporated, then nothing for one week, then some more comments through another two weeks, then they were incorporated, then another waiting for one week, then another bunch of comments, again incorporated, then another week, then another bunch of comments which he has to incorporate. Like if he could have compressed the comments into a few days on the beginning, then he would basically need to incorporate this just once and he would probably save a lot of time on the rebasing for the other changes and so on. Like that's that's the main point I'm trying to to make. It's not like I think that the comments are are wrong or that someone was uh, kind of commenting about uh, stupid things or or something like that. Like it's a PR as any other. The code should be good, but if we can manage to get the comments in a better timing, I think that will give the contributor a much better experience. Yeah, I know, I agree. But yeah, you know, it can happen that you are busy on something else and you don't have time for one week to review comments. So, and that happens even between maintainers sometimes, right? It's not just for new contributors. Yeah, but I think anyway, it's it, more yes. with it sucks more with contributors. No, no, no. Yeah, yes, yeah. That's true. But yeah, but it's also, to be honest, that's the problem I have with the state we are in right now. That's the problem of the project, right? Like, if nobody has time to review this part of component, and if you have this component which only one person is able to review, as with the canary from the maintainers, that's basically you my review there is let's be honest pretty much formal approval so like i don't think that's that's how the project should work and that really makes the trust into the project right so anyway that's so i guess now the state of the pr is quite clear now we need to fix the DCO and the tests. Let's see if he gets back to it. Okay, next one. I thought that this was a bit stale, but I saw Marco, you pushed something there today. So I guess that's just work in progress. Yeah, it's a uh, still ongoing thing. So it's not stale at all. Yeah, it's, I was adding the PRs there uh, yesterday, so. And I guess the other one, you said that you are looking into this as well. Right, well, um, there is a real case, uh, this one. So um, I'll be looking into this one and um, it is, there will probably be changes compared to what's in there right now. Um, oh, and over time, I guess we'll get it merged. Okay, great. Uh, if you need any help with it or anything, uh, let us know. Yeah, sure. Anyone has any other PR or issue they want to discuss?
Okay, anyone has any proposals they want to discuss? Well, I guess the rebalance proposals that's still work in progress. Yeah, uh, honestly, I have to come back to that, but uh, I think that it won't happen until uh, the next week, so in 10 days, because I will be on holiday the next one. Uh, but I will actually come back, absolutely, on the two auto rebalance proposal, the auto approval and the auto rebalance. So I guess nothing to discuss there right now. No, no. Okay. Then the next point that something what I added there based on some user feedback. So that's something what we were discussing already in the past. Uh, but then the Kafka exporter after a long time having no release, then it had some release fixed some of the issues. Uh, but now it didn't have the release again for a long time and a lot of scanners are triggering some weird CVEs in it. I don't really know how big issue they actually are. They are all kind of, it looks like Golang. I didn't saw it with, with Java or anything else, but Golang has a lot of the CVEs which are like, oh, hey, this has a CV because it was compiled with Golang 116 or 117. And I don't really understand Golang well enough to know whether this is something to be taken seriously or not. But I think the Kafka exporter has some redependencies have now a bunch of CVEs. And yeah, whether we like it or not, there's a lot of users who just run different scans on it. And it caused them problems when the scans throw up some CVEs because yeah, they have some audits and so on. So I think we need to at some point get back to this and think again what to do with it, whether we should have some, some fork with it to be able to build the binaries and, uh, and fix some of these CVEs, for example, or, uh, or how to deal with it, like in the, the last CVE, which, for example, some user was asking about was pretty much just about the compiler version. So I guess taking it and compiling it with Golang 118 and using that binary would just solve the CVE. But yeah, we would need to fork it and set up a CI pipeline for it to be able to do it, I guess. So I don't know, it's not like I have some thought through proposal, but I think it's something we need to think about. So sorry, Jakub, there are some there are some issues opened by users on the stream in Zeribo, right? Not uh, in the Kafka exporter one. There are some in the Kafka exporter as ah. well. Uh, and Pretty much, so I don't think, I'm not aware of anyone opening an issue in Streamsy about a CV, but there were some mailing list and Slack discussions. Uh, and I usually like, we pretty much do the same with most of the dependencies, right? We don't fork and rebuild Kafka to fix some dependency, which has some CV in Kafka that needs to be fixed in Kafka, right? So. Uh, that's pretty much my main answer to these things that it should be erased and fixed in the Kafka exporter repo. So uh, I think at least last time a new issue was opened and I think there are some issues for other CVs as well. And I think there are some open PRs to fix some of them, but yeah, if they are not getting fixed, then uh, that doesn't necessarily solve the problem for us and for the users. Yeah. Well, it seems to be the same problems that we had in the past, fixing uh, one bigger issue in the Kafka exporter. And uh, I remember yeah, Alex had first forked and then back to the community after a long time. Yeah, and for some time we used it from the from Alex yeah. repo, downloaded the binaries there, but then there were again one or two releases with the fixes. But now there haven't been anything for a long time, despite the issues and PRs. So, 
anyway, so as I said, it's not like I'm proposing some action, but I think it's something to think about because unless there is some new release, it's long term, not not really feasible. And we will need to do something about it. Anything more to that? Okay. Any anything else? Any other business? Not from me. Okay, then I guess that's it for today. Oh, let me add some notes to the. Okay, in that case, I guess that's it for today. So, cheers, folks. For joining. Cheers. Thank thanks you. very much. Bye. Bye all.